In this video I'm gonna give you my best composition tips for macro photography. And I'm gonna try to make this video quick so you can learn something quickly and just go out there and try these techniques yourself. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, more about them later. Tip number one, background sky. And this is very useful, because in macro photography you tend to get very dark backgrounds most of the time and one easy way to solve that is to simply hold whatever you're photographing up to the sky and make sure there is some sky in the background and that will make the photo a lot nicer because you will have a colorful bright background. Here you can see that this, the sunlight in the background is colored by the forest around this frozen water drop. And here I actually, I held my red sweater up behind uh, and this is a variation of the concept that you need something bright in your background because I was using a flash, the flash shown on my sweater here and we created this kind of red, pretty cool effect. Here is just regular blue sky in the background, it adds something to the photo. Here is also sky. Here is definitely a lot of sky and this was an overcast day and see what, what kind of difference it makes to a macro photo. It becomes completely different than if I would just have shot it normally with like the, the ground or something in the background. Here you see some blue sky in the background here. This ant is sitting on a tree and I managed to get some sky in the background. Here is uh, the same ant I think sitting on a brighter area of the tree. Sky in the background makes a very interesting effect. Here is a more subtle uh, sky in the background. Still, I get some color because I, I tried an angle where the sky is in the background. Same here and same here. And here I was uh, photographing some uh, morning dew on a leaf and I held it up towards the sky. And since the sun was shining, I got these really cool effects from the highlights of the other water drops. So, sky in the background is a very useful composition technique. My next tip, color contrast. And this is basically about making your subject and your background have contrasting colors that harmonize and complement each other in a nice way so that the photo becomes more vivid and more interesting. I think this is a pretty nice example, this uh, very strong green here and the purple in the background. They go well together and, and they make the photo more dynamic. Here's another example, this orange uh, with the forest green in the background. I think these colors contrast in a nice way and I think that is a lot of what makes this an interesting photo. Here's another example, red against yellow, against white, against brown. The colors work well together and uh, they make for a nice color contrast and on top of that this bug has a very nice contrast uh, towards the bright background. I think in many cases uh, when you manage to get color contrast the whole photo just goes to a new level basically. Here we have the yellow which contrasts nicely against the black and this contrasts very nicely against the green in the background. Here we have another example of uh, orange against um, green, works very well, these colors work very well together. Here we have dark subject, yellow flower, green background, contrasting colors. Here is green against purple, lovely combination, and a white subject also contrasts against the rest of the composition. Here we also have again orange against uh, green and with some blue as well. Dark and yellow and purple and green. And yeah, this is also a good example. And here's an example of like the opposite when you don't have good color contrast. Since the green is so close to the yellow here, they are not contrasting that well and as you can see the photo is a lot less dynamic, a lot less interesting and simply doesn't look as good as the other examples I showed you earlier. My next tip, focus on the eyes. This one is probably pretty obvious to many macro photographers but I still wanted to include it because it is very important. If there's any doubt about where you're going to focus your photo, focus on the eyes of your insect. and. Um, in most cases that will make for a beautiful composition no matter like 
the angle or what the rest of the composition is about or the depth of field, like it always works to focus on the eyes of the subject. My next tip, leverage flatness. And this is due to the fact that in macro photography the uh, depth of field is minuscule and often very close to like a half millimeter or one millimeter. But if you find areas on your subject that are flat, you can try to make this um, be in the focal plane, like the edge of the um, fly here. You can see the wings are closer, so they are blurry, and the rest of the fly is also blurry, but it doesn't matter that much since I got like this interesting edge of the fly here and the eye in focus. I leveraged the flatness of this area here and uh, it made for a pretty nice photo. Here's another example. The wings are in the same plane, plane as the eyes. And uh, even though the depth of field is very minuscule, I managed to get like the most important parts in focus and the photo came out pretty good. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. They are a website building tool and you can also buy your domain there. And I actually used them and loved them long before they became a sponsor of this channel. And you basically just go there, pick a domain name, build a website in like a few minutes. I've spent like 30 minutes building my portfolio website and I'm so happy with the result. They have beautiful designs to pick from and everything is so easy and you can also set up a web shop and sell stuff and like they have lots of nice features. Try them for free and when you realize just like I did just how great they are you can use my code Michael Wydell for a 10% discount of your first purchase. Thank you Squarespace and now back to the video. My next tip is room in front. And this is actually something I learned from movies. Whenever there is some kind of direction in um, a shot and you have an individual, or in this case an insect, it is nice to leave some more space in front of the subject than in the back. It just looks better. It looks like we, you, you can see that the, the subject is going somewhere. And I think actually bird photographers do this a lot as well. Here's an example of when you break this rule, we have more space in the back than in the front. And as you can see, like it doesn't look as balanced. It doesn't look as good for some reason. Uh, it looks a lot better when you have more room in the front than in the back. Here's another example. So this is something I keep in the back of my head and I always try to apply this rule. More room in the front than in the back. The photo will just look better. Here I also tried to leave uh, some room in the front and yeah, it, it, it does something to the photo. Same here, same here, same here. Leave some room in the front of your subject and the photo will look more balanced. My next tip, room to breathe. And by this I mean that it's important in most compositions to leave some room around your subject, some negative space so that the subject has some room to breathe. Here I intentionally left a lot of room around the sub main subject here and I think that is very important for the composition. And also when you do this it's a nice thing to try to keep the distance between the outer edges and the frame kind of equal on all sides. The distance here is kind of equal to the distance here, which is kind of equal to the distance here and the distance here. That makes the composition more balanced and symmetric. Here we have another example. I left a lot of space around the main subject and I think that elevated the whole photo a lot. Same thing here. Same thing here. Leave a lot of room um, around your main subject here as well. And here as well. When your subject has room to breathe, the photo just it just looks better. Next up, rule of thirds. And basically, this is also something I uh, use a lot. I mean, all of these rules, you shouldn't use them all the time on every photo, but you should have them as a toolbox to pick from whenever you're trying to make a nice composition. Here I apply the rule of thirds so that uh, this um, hoverfly here sits on one third of the frame. Here I use it again. The snail here is on the lower third line here and uh, the background here starts on another third. And I think to make it makes the photo more balanced. 
here it is again. I, if you divide the photo into three parts here and here, you can see that I placed the uh, focal point of this photo here on one of the thirds. Here it is again, one third to the left here. If you divide it in three parts here and here, I place the main subject here. Again, I place the main subject along this line, uh, utilizing the rule of thirds. And also, I kind of tried to use it this way as well. So here you have one third, and here the main subject starts, and here you have the other third, and here the main subject ends. Here it's also pretty obvious. The bottom third, I use this line to, to place the, the main focus of the composition. Again, well, lower third is the flower here, the middle third is the bee, and the upper third is negative space. Again, and again. I use this a lot. My next tip is symmetry. And yeah, this is sel pretty self-explanatory. Whenever you have an opportunity to try to make the photo symmetric, it's really good to, to do that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is something that works in all kinds of photos, not only macro photos, of course. Uh, if you, if you, I mean, I didn't quite nail it here, obviously, but still, I, I, I managed to get the, the fly in the middle with like equal distances to all the, the sides, and that makes the photo more symmetrical uh, than many other compositions I could have picked. Same thing here, although I, it doesn't seem like I completely <laughs> nailed it, but yeah, the idea here is that, that this should be symmetrical. And my next tip is uncomfortable angles and this is basically about not using the obvious angle where you just like stand in front of your subject and you look down in a 45 degree angle and just focus it like in the laziest possible angle try to get on the same level as your subject or maybe even from below or like very close and you will get a much more interesting composition uh, always try to find an angle which is not the most comfortable one. Try and find an un uncomfortable angle and you will very often have a much more interesting photo. I mean this bug for example, I could have just stood up and like photographed it s slightly from above, but since I made the extra effort to get down and get on the same level as uh, this insect, and shooting it straight from the side, I got a lot more interesting composition. Same here, I could have just photographed this ladybug from above, and then I would maybe even have missed that it is chewing on something here, but since I uh, went down to the ground and tried to photograph it slightly from below, I got a lot more interesting composition. Try to find uncomfortable angles. This is a counter example. This is what most beginner macro photos look like. You see a bug, you just photograph it from the laziest angle and you get a very uninteresting compositions in, composition in many cases. That's it guys. I hope you found some new interesting idea to try on your next photo walk. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new photography videos every week and uh, yeah. See you soon again, over and out, bye!